Again, I guess, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it back over to you and kind of uh, have a similar discussion to what you had previously, and then again, come to a decision. Thank you. Thank you. Um, commissioners, any uh, any questions, any thoughts? Uh, e just kind of hits on what we talked about. Um, traffic and uh, general welfare. So I think that that is it. Yeah, A, I'm not so sure the special um, land use shall be designed, constructed, and operated in 18. We're not changing what it is. Right. So I think E is is, uh, is appropriate. Okay. And I'll make I'll make uh, anybody else. I'm sorry, commissioners. Seeing none, uh, I'll make that uh, motion then that we deny um, the special land use uh, review standard um, E uh, in section 1703. Uh, for the, for the reason of uh, traffic and uh, general welfare. Do I have a second? Second. And further discussion. Sue. Commissioner Chambers. Yes. Commissioner Ellis. Yes. Commissioner Gadula. Yes. And Chair Barker. Yes. Thank you. Next on the old business is a master plan update. And all in the audience who are not aware of it, uh, and it's probably likely many are not, uh, the City Council has approved a new master plan. The last one was done in 2007. Um, and so one of the things that we need uh, desperately from everybody is input. Uh, and Andy's going to give us uh, kind of a guideline here as to how and when and where you can do those kinds of things. But I would urge everybody to be active in the master plan because that's what will guide the city for the next 15, 20 years. And it's important that everybody have input. Uh, we all think differently. We're all different ages. We all come at things differently. I'm a newcomer to Lowell. I've only been here eight years. Everybody has a different outlook. And I think it's very important that we come together as a city and, and figure out the master plan <coughs> that will help the city and guide the city. And it guides us here on the Planning Commission, obviously. So it, it is important. It's critical. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, um, and, and so, in, and just to clarify, the plan. So, the City Council has not approved a plan, but it has approved. You know, so basically, it's authorized the Planning Commission to, to do the work to actually write the plan and create it. And so, this is going to be a probably 12 to 18 month process that we're going to spend doing this. So. Um, for the Planning Commission, this, this, this is the very beginning of a, of a long and hopefully fun exercise um, thinking about the future of the city. Um, and I'm excited that we have kind of a captive audience here who probably isn't here to listen to this, but I guess too darn bad you're going to learn about the <laughs> <laughs> um, So I'll start, and this is for everyone's benefit here, you know, what is a master plan? Um, it's, it's, it's a document, it's a policy statement largely driven by the Planning Commission that, that describes the desired physical development of a community. Um, any community in Michigan that has a zoning ordinance has to have a master plan. Um, and so that, that master plan is based on the resources of the land, the character of the city, and perhaps most importantly, the needs and desires of the residents. Um, the city has a master plan now, it was adopted in 2007, so it's, it's been a bit, it's been 15 years since it's been touched, hasn't been modified or updated or amended at all during that time. Um, and obviously a lot has changed since then. So, you know, you know, Planning Commission, City Council staff kind of felt like this is a good time for the city to embark on kind of this effort to, to, re to rewrite the plan. Most of the City Council was not on City Council when that plan was written. The entire Planning Commission, I think, is turned over during that time too. So there's a lot of new ideas, new faces new residents, the city has changed, and so this is, this is a good time to, to kind of go, th go through this process. Um, it's important because a master plan, and Mr. Chairman, you mentioned that it helps the Planning Commission, it helps the, it helps the Planning Commission and the City Council make consistent decisions that are, when you make a zoning decision, if you amend an ordinance or do something like that, it's got to be based on policy. Um, so it helps to have consistent de decisions if you're always following a plan, plan provides guidance for community actions, it provides a basis for zoning, so when we're talking about 
what kind of businesses we want to see in Lowell, what kind of housing we want to see in Lowell, um, mm -hmm. what kind of industry we want, we want to see in Lowell, uh, how we want our downtown to look and feel, how we want our commercial corridors to look and feel. Um, that's all regulated through, through zoning and our plan gives us a basis for that. Um, it provides kind of an overarching vision for the future and, and, and a framework for, for growth and change and how we manage that change. You know, one thing that we can all say for certain is that in 15 years, levels are going to be different. We don't know how. Um, we're not sure what's going to drive that change necessarily, but it's going to be different in some way, shape, or form. And so having a document in place and a policy that really guides that change moving forward is going to be of an immense benefit to the city in the long term. Master plans are pretty lengthy documents, so I mean, it'll be you know, a good 100 pages, I would guess. Um, it's going to contain a bunch of different pieces and parts. It'll have a, a, a description of the community. It'll have, so that's talking about natural features and demographics and kind of the people and um, education levels and housing stock and things like that. We'll look at transportation. We'll look at natural features. We'll look at land use. Um, I mentioned demographics. We'll also have goals. We'll have objectives. We'll have land use recommendations. We'll have a, a future land use map that shows and illustrates what kind of development should go where, what it should look like, what it should feel like, how it's going to be, you know, how it would be characterized. All of that goes into the plan. That's all part of the document itself. Um, so like I said, the last plan was written in, in, in 2007. There's a lot of plans and policies you know, that need to be in, integrated into a cohesive document. The Planning Enabling Act requires the plan be reviewed every five years, and I would mention that the Planning Commission has been, has been good about doing that. We've taken a look at it every five years. Um, and when we looked at it this last time, uh, I think it was last year, we said, well, we've been through two U.S. Census cycles since the last master plan. Um, like I said, new board, new planning commission, lots of new, new faces, new businesses. Um, and again, I felt like an in, in, in appropriate time. So this is a good opportunity, to, good opportunity to review and adjust policies from the previous plan. I anticipate that we will keep some of the policies and statements that are in your old plan. It's not all bad. Um, but again, updating it for, for, for current times, for, for 2023 in this you know, interesting new world that we live in now, is, is going to be something that we'll need to you know, carefully put together to make sure that, that it reflects Lowell today and it looks forward to Lowell in, in the future. Um, so the process is you know, eight steps here. We're in step one, which is we have to send out a letter to all of your neighboring jurisdictions. Uh, we'll, we, we've actually already started doing this community profile work in step two. That's going to take a while. Um, public engagement, you know, Mr. Chairman, you mentioned that we'll be talking to the public. You'll be Hopefully we'll be seeing everybody in this room at some point. We will be doing, um, we'll be doing a survey. We will be showing up at a couple of the um, concert series events uh, either next month, either in April or April, either August or uh, September. We're going to be at two of those. We're going to try and get in front of some students at the high school or middle school. We're going to have an open house, I think. We've planned a whole bunch of different events, different ways to get feedback from, from the community. Um, we're going to try to capture input from people of all ages, all lifestyles, all you know, income levels and everything else. So we can really get a good cross-section of the community to provide us with that feedback that we need. That's going to be a, a really big, big part of that plan and it'll take, you know, the late summer and most of fall and into early winter to kind of get through all of that, all of that engagement, get it all planned out so it's effective. It'll be fun, hopefully. Um, and we'll hear a lot of really interesting ideas from people. We will take all of that information and we will use that to inform the goals and objectives and the future land use and implementation plans. Um, goals and objectives are basically policy statements that talk about what the long-term goals are and the objectives are how you get there. Future land use is just that, it's a long-term land use plan. So again, what parts of the city are going to develop in what ways, what's it going to look, what kind of land uses are going to go there. We need to talk about all that, and then implementation is how you get there. What do you actually have to do to implement the plan? It's a, it'll be kind of like a checklist, sort of, where you go down a list of, you know, five or ten or however many things, and if you implement and do all of those steps, you will put your plan together, and the vision will have come to 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 fruition. So once we get all of those steps done, kind of two through six, we'll have a complete draft master plan document. 
It'll be evaluated by the Planning Commission, evaluated by the public, eventually it'll be re reviewed and recommended to City Council for final adoption. Um, like I said, it's going to take a year to a year and a half to get through all of this, so it's not something that we're just going to you know, come up with in a couple of days. It'll take a long time. It'll be a, a, a really fun process, um, and I think we'll learn a lot more about, about the community than, than we can we do right now. So just real quick, the community profile, we talked about notices, we've re reviewed the master plan all, all, already, we'll talk about that some more. I have a series of meetings with the planning commission that will go over the results. Public participation, we'll talk about how we, how we promote the plan, obviously. Um, a bunch of different engagement strategies that I talked about, those will go into an engagement report that will get delivered to the planning commission. And this will all be made publicly available to online. Um, the master plan itself will have a series of meetings where we do the future land use plan, the implementation plan, the goals and objectives. Um, and then when we get to the finalization stage, there's a nine week period where we have to let it sit per statute. We distribute it to the neighbors. Um, but we'll be already thinking about what to do next during that 63 days. We'll be thinking about what are the implementation tasks that we want to check off right away so we can hit the ground running moving forward. Um, Timeline wise, this is timeline wise, this is roughly what we're looking like. So project kickoff and notices, that's July, you know, this meeting and then the notices will be done in a week or two. Um, the plan review, the community profile takes a while just because it's so much work. As you can see in this red the engagement. It's gonna be a lot of meetings, a lot of uh, planning efforts um, to get in front of people. Like I said, we'll have an online survey, we'll have visioning sessions, we'll have something in the classroom hopefully. Um, put a big report together. It'll be a lot of fun. We'll, like I said, we're going to learn so much about what people want for their community. That's really what the most important thing is for you all as planning commissioners is that we need to not just, you know, it's, it's not up to you to sit up here and make decisions. It's not up to me to sit here and give you my input on what I think you should do. It's our job to listen to what the public wants and how they want the community to grow and change. And that's really the goal of the public engagement process here. Um, future land use will be in winter, uh, plan draft should be ready by spring, and then ideally that 63, day can, 63 days can run over the summer of 2020, it should be 2023 and four actually up at the top there, but be looking at, you know, late summer or fall next year, which is when this will be all done. Um, engagement strategy, I said pop-out planning, visioning sessions, classroom collaboration, community survey. Um, We'll get the word out, social media, website, mailers if we need to. Um, again, we'd encourage all the planning commissioners, all the council members to engage and talk to their neighbors, talk about it at council meetings and DEA meetings and everything else where, where people might come to so people know what's going on and know how they can participate. Um, so we're looking at the council series, one of these four dates. Um, not sure which of these are going to work, but we will figure that out. Um, I mean, one question for the Planning Commission, um, if you want to talk about it tonight, or we can talk about it as we kind of move through, through, through this process, think about some of the, if there are specific questions or topics that we need to be thinking about as we move through this process, let's talk about those, make sure we're asking them at the survey, make sure that we're asking them at the concert series, um, so we know that we're asking the right questions. I think that's good discussion of it, I think. We need more of our board members here to. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so I mean, given this, these these days, obviously we'll have time prior to starting any of this at the August meeting. Maybe we can dig into this a little bit deeper. But give that some thought over the over the next month. I'll give you one right here. Yeah. <clears throat> the rivers. We need to make better use of the rivers. Mm -hmm. If that includes cleaning them up or getting figured out how we clean them up. Um, we need to do a better. It, it's, it's our city. That's where. That's where it's at. Is our rivers. That and free beer on Thursday. I mean, <laughs> beer, <laughs> I, I really need to concentrate somewhat on that. Though. So I'll give okay. you. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, so that's about it. You know, again, this is a quick overview. Um, I know we have a lot to get through tonight, so I didn't want to spend a ton of time on it, but I wanted to kind of get you all on the same page as far as where we're going. Um, so at the August meeting, let's plan on kind of getting into some of those survey questions and some of those issues a little bit deeper. We'll design some of the engagement materials to, to reflect some of that stuff that we'll talk about, and we'll be ready to go. So are there any other questions from the commissioners on this topic?
if you're going to do a uh, July concert, uh, questions for late July? They only go through August 24th. Yeah, yeah. So, so we have 20, 27th is, is a possibility. Otherwise, it's August 10, 17, and 24. So, so we could do the the August dates might make more sense. We have time to talk about it before we have an, an, another meeting. Otherwise, just individually send me an email with some concerns or questions. We can do it in July. That's fine. We just as long as we need to get out there to get it. Yeah. And both. And the cool thing about these engagement things is that we just, so the idea is that we're just going to show up to some place where people are, are, already are at. We don't have to ask them to commit to doing something else when they, right. they'd rather be at the concert. So let's just go to the concert and kiss people while they're there. That's the idea here. So that's what we'll be doing. And we'll have a, different, a few different things we do. I always think it's kind of neat that when Andy said they were going to go to the middle school and talk to kids, and it kind of intrigued me because my granddaughter <laughs> will suddenly say something, and I'm like, well, geez, why didn't I think of that, mm -hmm. right? So out of the minds of babies, maybe they all have something good for our master plan. Uh, along with everybody in this room, I hope you all chip in and help us get through this. What do you think about it? They'll be 30 years old. Uh, yeah, so and that's kind of the idea. I mean, they're, 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 they're going to be living with, with the decisions that are made in this process, so it's important that yep. we ask about some of the things that are important to them, too. And you got to get, yeah, i got to ask the questions right, and you have to have the right age group, but you can get a really interesting and valuable input as well. So it's not like you're just going to ask for roller coasters and stuff. Like, so they, they've given us really good input in the past, and I would certainly anticipate that here, too. We have somebody who wants to add something or join the... Hello again. The, the uh, Mike DeVore, 424 Elm. I am only here to ask about that free beer that you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> suggestion? No, I'm just kidding. You could get reelected. Just a couple of... Number one, I want to thank you guys for heading this up. I know it is a massive undertaking. I know that your board is new to this strategic plan, as is ours. Uh, Light and Power is undertaking it, the Fire Department is undertaking it, Parks undertook it, so we're grateful for the time and the effort. A couple of suggestions, a um, couple festivals this summer at Fallsburg might be a good captive audience and more people that are involved in the arts and the events and stuff like that. And uh, the third Sunday in September, there's going to be a Police versus Fire Department charity softball game. That might be a good audience for as far as getting people with kids out and anything that we can do to help please let us know. I'm grateful i'll be at your house next thursday <laughs> <laughs> uh, just just to give a little ray of hope hopefully um, this is actually the third in my own life i uh, was on a planning commission as a chair and so I've gone through two of these prior to this, so this is my third one. And when I tell you that it makes a difference, believe it. It makes a huge difference in the way your kids will live. Not, not necessarily, I'm, I'm too old for it, but the way you kids will live, your kids will live, it does make a difference. So please help us out. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Joel Miller, my new address is 1464 Center Hill. Um, when you talk about the river and ways to use it, um, quite a few years ago my husband and I were in Providence, Rhode Island, and what they call a river out there is kind of like what people call a river in Los Angeles. It's a big piece of smack that has no yay much water running through it. But they've really uh, done something very cool because they I don't want to call them a fire pit because they're not. And I don't remember exactly how they were set up, but there were areas in the river that were lit, like on the weekends. And just a very nice look to the town. Um, and a lot of the river walk, a lot more people came out on the nights that it was lit. Um, so when you're talking about things in the river, we might want to see what other towns are doing. Just as, as a good way to plan. Thank you. Thank you. Good idea. Great idea. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. 
my name is Rita Lundstrom. I live at 220 King Street. I just have a question. After a site plan has been approved, is there a time frame that the project has to start and be finished? It has to start within a year of approval, and there's not a time frame on when it has to be done. I mean, typically, we just want to see consistent progress on it. So okay, then we have a year to start. That being said, maybe we might want to add time frames to projects. It seems like some are starting and they're not. They're just sitting and not nothing's being developed. Nothing's going forward. Um, yeah, I mean, there are some that have, I mean, we try to communicate as best we can with some of the applicants that have started and stopped. There can be supply chain issues or other things. Sure. Going on. So we're, we try as best we can. There's also an extension process built in there where the planning commission can grant a six month extension of that 12 months. <laughs> um, but otherwise, yeah, I mean, we're looking to make sure people can do their projects as best we can. Okay, so they have to start within a year of being approved. Yep. But there's no final date. That they have to have it done by. Just, we just hope to see them diligently proceeding towards completion, but you know, okay. the ordinance does not specify a time frame for that. Okay, so if nothing's being done on the project, then do you guys contact the people and say, hey, what's going on? Yeah, we typically follow up with them and try to see what, what the deal is and if there's something that okay. we can do or something that needs to be done. Okay. Can I call you and talk to you about I, I was just going to say, project? if there's a specific one, you need to call him or Sue Oliver. Yep. Okay. I'll do that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That, that would be the right way. Yeah. We, we three girls are here, and we live in Northern View, Riverview Flats. There are three of us that are widows. There are two that are single women, and then there are husbands and wives. We are living with the eyesore that was the school. We are now starting to be afraid because it's more than an eyesore. Windows are out. It's been broken into several times. We have no idea what's living in there, but things are living in there. And it's getting so we're afraid to go. We single girls are afraid to come home longer. And we bought there because we felt it was safer across the street from the police department. We were promised when we all bought that it was going to become luxury condos. <laughs> and, and another island community. That whole area was going to be a community. And we have a beautiful community of people. But it's scary. It's getting scary. And we don't know what to do when we need to Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Having said that, then, we will go on to new business. Uh, we have a public hearing site plan special land use uh, for 115 Riverside. Drive. Uh, is uh, Todd Hall here, please? Todd, would you come on up and tell us what you want to do? Uh, you know, five five minutes or so, just kind of an overview of it. Sure. Thank you, Todd Shaw, 220 Grand Street Hopkins. Um, I read Andy's report earlier, and as you all know, he does a phenomenal job, and he did on that. I don't have much to add to his report. Uh, and all the conditions that he suggested are normal, and yeah, those are great. Uh, as I'm sure y'all know, and the people in the audience know, that's old line shack building that's also been referred to for many years. And, and uh, yeah, our my project's pretty simple. Four very nice condominium kind of units there, right on the river, uh, parking underneath, so we're not taxing any of the parking. Um, City I worked hard with retailers and stakeholders, uh, different residential uh, people in the community here to address parking needs a while ago and did the parking lot you know, across the street there and behind some of the buildings. And uh, we're not affecting that at all. So all that continues and just a nice, quiet, simple project. Okay, thank you. And I'll 
let Andy do his thing and address any questions that may come up as a result. Okay, thank you. Well, I, I might add one thing. Um, looking past uh, the immediacy of the building to landscape to the north for the benefit of uh, the neighborhood there and truthfully the project as well. I mean, it becomes win-win. Uh, it looks nice for the project, it looks nice to the city. We'll be essentially creating a parklet there and donating that back to the city. And uh, I used to live across the street on Main Street, 216, and when I was out and about walking my dog, I used to see uh, people down there trying to fish along the bank and enjoying it, and this will clean that all up and address, uh, at my cost, uh, deferred maintenance along there and make it nice, make it work. Thank you. Thank you. Andy, as usual, would you please run us through the uh, site plan? Yep. You know, Thank you. So, special planters. Yeah, uh, actually, this is just a site plan. Oh. Um, okay. Oh, you're right, it does, it does, I'm sorry. Um, so, a little bit of background, this property was rezoned, it used to be zoned, yeah, public facilities back when it was owned by the city. Um, as a part of that process of the city divesting itself of the property, it was rezoned to be included in the C2, which is your downtown district. Um, that district permits uh, as a special land use, as you pointed out, multifamily buildings. And that's basically what we have here. It's a small multifamily building. There's just four residential units right next to each other. Um, the lot itself is is quite small. It's only 4,000 square feet. I think we all know where it is, and it's 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 quite small. Um, the building that's proposed here is a three-story multifamily condominium building. So there would be sort of right next to each other lined up. Um, four three-story, you know, individual buildings. So on the ground floor would be an enclosed garage, and the upper two floors would be residential space. Um, a few years ago, we amended that C2 downtown district to permit multifamily as a special use for honestly projects. Kind of like I was thinking about this project at the time, but for things not on Main Street, we're looking to include residential as an option downtown. So. You know, we can have additional residences downtown to support additional businesses downtown, etc. Um, so we will, as we just did a few minutes ago, uh, walk through the site plan review and special land use standards. Um, so at the risk of sounding repetitive, we'll start with 1806A, and I'll kind of summarize each, each of the standards and uh, summarize my comments on each one of them. Um, the first one is that the use is proposal might adversely affect the public health, safety, or welfare. There shall be a plan to take into account topography, size of the property, use on adjoining, adjoining property, and so forth. Um, you know, as, as I mentioned, the three-story building is on the first floor, living spaces above that. Um, this building is pretty much maxing out what you can do with the downtown district, which is honestly desired. These are areas where we want people to use all of the property as much as they can, so there's no lot coverage uh, limitations. There are no setback requirements. You can build right up to the lot lines on all four of the property corners. Um, existing nearby uses include retail, restaurants, government buildings, and health processing, residential. So the addition, in my view, the addition of four additional kind of medium units here would not um, would not adversely impact the public health, safety, or welfare. It would be safe and convenient, uncongested, and will be fine vehicular and pedestrian circulation shall be provided. Um, there's not any parking outside of the site. The only parking that's shown here is in the garage that would be on the first floor of those buildings. This was a you know, a bit of a discussion point with some of the earlier proposals for this site is in terms of where people are going to park if there's other non-residential uses there, where is it going to go if there are residential uses there, but not garages. There's no place for them to park, so this, this solves that problem. Um, uh, if there is any additional parking needed or, or desired, that should be addressed with the applicant, but it looks like they've met the standard, which would be two spaces per unit, which is the requirement for residential parking. Um, item C. The arrangement of public or private vehicular and pedestrian connections to existing or planned streets shall be planned to provide a safe and efficient circulation system. Um, it's a it's on the sidewalk, it's served by sidewalks. 
Um, the, there's not really much of a concern for having um, you know, street connections because there's only one street and there's not any other street connections possible other than what we have here. So it's a fairly simple analysis as far as that's concerned. Um, item D, the removal of, of, or alteration of significant natural features will be restricted to those areas necessary to develop the site. Um, you know, again, there's not much landscaping proposed here other than what Mr. Shaw mentioned, just because they're using all of the site and it is a very, you know, limited uh, property. Um, if there is additional landscaping or street trees or anything that's, that's desired by the Planning Commission, those could certainly be discussed. Um, there's not a requirement for landscaping and zoning ordinance due to its current zoning classification. And again, the fact that downtown want people to use all of the property, um, and so that, you know, obviates the need for a lot of landscaping on the site. An immediate satisfactory assurance that shall be provided that the requirements of the city shall be met, and that would be a condition of approval. Um, and then half is consistency with the master plan. Um, the old plan, or the current plan, the 2007 plan, um, talks about the, the C2 district of the downtown area being pedestrian oriented and consistent with the, develop, with the development pattern of downtown Lowell. Um, they're certainly going to, by the site being so small and building up, up to the street, and it's, I mean, this is going to be a um, somewhat walkable development in the sense that people will be able to easily walk to nearby restaurants, to nearby shops, they can walk to downtown. Uh, which is a benefit of the location of the property. Um, the plan talks about providing additional housing near and in downtown Lowell, and so it accomplished that goal as well. Um, there is some language in the master plan that sort of desires uh, first floor, more active uses, and only having residential on the upper floors, and we generally agree with that. You know, however, this is one of those properties that's so unique and so weird that that's almost impossible to accomplish, given Given the parking in its location, it's not as high traffic up in areas like what we would see on Main Street. Um, so we'll kind of recognize that, you know, it's not perfectly ideal here. We think that it does as, as good a job as it can of, of fitting some density and some residential uses onto the site and, again, having four more units in downtown. Um, and those are all of the site plan review standards. So, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it back over to you for discussion, and then we'll get into the next yeah. um, I'm going to give commissioners first crack, and then we'll uh, open it up for public uh, consumption. Any questions? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, be between your building and the restaurant, uh, I, I think some green space would be, you know, uh, maybe work with with them to create a then she has an outdoor patio there and, um, instead of just looking at the side of the house with gas meters on it you know do something for it sure I guess that would be my yeah I'd love to I mean that's my perspective which is why I'm also looking more to the right. landscaping so I think you're planning on going over the top of the old water intake right for the right. generators to the edge of that big yep. tree and so the structure of that old Water intake uh, um, piece would be part of the structural piece for a deck. Okay. So we'll hide that eyesore and maybe we'll get rid of that hatch too. Somebody's going to get in. Um, that's it. Other than that, I'm good. Tony? I'm good. Um, the timeline. What, what, uh, presupposing you get it, an okay. What are we looking at timeline-wise? Uh, we need to have some environmental reports done yet, which uh, are normal and don't take long. Some transaction items need to be done yet uh, that start and not. We've got approval versus jumping the gun. Uh, get the architect engaged to do permit drawings. Right now, what you have is elevations and concepts but get that to a permit, ready, set, put it out for bid, and the intent would be to go as soon as everything falls in place like that. Any, any timeline at all next summer? Yeah, next summer. Move in, yeah. that, that situation? Uh, move in might be optimistic the way the uh, construction uh, Business. environment is right now, but uh, certainly uh, there would be meaningful construction going on. Yes. Oh, thank you. Will the building be 
Uh, will the building be coming down yet this year? Yes. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> Andy, one of Andy's recommendations is entered into a development agreement, which uh, we're working on. And one of the conditions is that there's demolition in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Got bids on the demolition, and that would be one of the first things that would occur. Okay. So we'll clean that off the site all okay. up. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I will, no further questions. I will open it up to the general public then. Comments, please. Hello, my name is Beryl Barkis. I reside at 215 and a half West Main Street. This is a property that is something that I look at every single day because I see it outside my window. Um, so I just have some questions. Um, I all I see is a map, or you know what looks to me like a map. Um, I know that there's parking underneath. Um, does that mean with four units there are eight spots, um, eight parking spots underneath the building? Todd, you might be able to answer that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know if Andy was going to answer that or I can. Yeah. Either of us can answer. Okay. There's there's four units as I understand four units across. Right. Side by side, and underneath that are two stall garages, four of them. Okay. Okay, so that covers the parking situation. Um, I'm also wondering about height. Um, I heard something said about elevation. Is there going to be a height variance on this building, or is it? Is that another discussion, or when does that come into play? This complies with what the current zoning ordinance requirement is for height, which I think is 40 feet. It's less than that. It is less than that. And does that include any top decks or anything um, above? Is that a, just a flat roof, just a standard roof? It's just a standard, standard gabled roof, and height is measured at halfway between the peak and the eave. Okay. So it meets what the requirement is. Okay. Um, the other question is, I know the last um, group in line for this building came up with a very plain looking building that had no windows on the back side. That was before they modified it, so they did modify to correct that, but does it have windows on all sides? Is, can we see a picture of what's to be developed? I see you've got something. Do you have one on this? Yeah, yes. a screen that people can see? They've got one on my one. Can I plug in my computer? You can Let's do this. I'll throw it on the table over here. That's okay. It'd be great if that kind of stuff could be seen by everyone because last time, um, thank you. I appreciate that very, very much. Um, and I'm glad to see windows on the back side. Thank you. Um, the other question is the other thing that happens on that street is we do get people that, as soon as they get past, um, say, more Mex Mexicano, which is the restaurant there, they hit the gas and they fly down that road. Will there be any sort of um, speed bumps, barricades, someone backing out of a blind garage onto the street? Can that be addressed for safety reasons? I think that would be something that you could address that to Mike as a concern, right? Because that would be, you know, whether you put a speed bump in or whatever, it is a city street, so. Right. Uh, and they're backing right into the street. Yeah. Uh, you get I, down about 20 yeah. yards and you run into the first pocket. That, that is true, which I kind of, I'm not looking forward to them repairing that street, because they fly them. Okay. I know. Um, I think that <coughs> covers the questions I have. Wouldn't you agree? If, if for, for, like, if, uh, maybe look into what we Yeah, we'd have to look to see what type of, I know the, the, the laws on speed bumps are pretty restrictive, so it's something I don't, this isn't the only area in the city where right. we might want to consider speed bumps, but it's something we probably or, should look at. Or maybe possibly a stop sign rate where light and power, you know. That's not a bad idea. Where you put your, your payment in or the red box, box or a stop box. sign. The other, yeah, the other thing that's worth pointing out here is that because this is a, I mean, this this is going to be built right up to the street. It's a fairly tall building. It's much more active use than what you have now. Just the fact that that's there, taking up space, will likely naturally that slow down, down the cars yeah. just because there's something there. There's that edge. You have, you have a higher you have a higher elevated building that actually calls the traffic. So, I mean, I'm not you know not getting that. Yeah, because you're feeling generally so, speaking, yeah. at what you are. Just, just something to keep in mind. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. 
I'll take a welcome back. Mike DeVore, 424 Helm. Uh, the speed bump thing is a fantastic idea. I live on that stretch of Lincoln Lake and Helm, and for years people were flying down that to avoid the 25 on Hudson, and they put that little cutout in there right at Richards Park. So you can't use it to go all the way down, and that's helped a ton. So something like that or a stop sign, irrelevant to what I'm here talking about. Uh, I want to speak out in favor of this development. Um, as someone who has been through bulk of the previous RFP plans for this project, and I've seen them fail for public comment reasons or developer reasons or reasons that were of our own doing, um, every issue with this property in the past has been addressed with this plan. The off the street parking, the height requirement, um, a useless piece of land now will become a small city park, which will give more people river access, which I think falls into the master plan. Um, so I am fully in support of this. Thank you. Any, anybody else from the public? I'll close the public portion then. Uh, commissioners, any thoughts on the um, site plan review standards A through F? If not, I would entertain a motion to adopt uh, the site plan or accept the site plan and new standards A through F. I'll make that motion. And the second. Support. And discussion. Sue, voice vote. Commissioner Chambers? Yes. Commissioner Ellis? Yes. Commissioner Cadula? Yes. And Chair Barker? Yes. The uh, next uh, step is the special land use criteria, which is set, uh, section 1703. Uh, and again, there are six standards. Yes, six standards. All right. Um, number one, the proposed special land use shall be designed, constructed, operated, and maintained so as to be harmonious and appropriate in appearance with the existing character of the general vicinity. That these will not change the essential character of the area which is proposed. Um, so we wrote here that this, you know, generally follows the overall aesthetic of the, of the downtown. It's consistent with other structures in the vicinity in terms of its location. Um, we support downtown living in general, um, and they haven't proposed any additional on-site or off-site park, off parking other than what's proposed in those four garage spaces. Um, in general, this is going to fit in reasonably well with that kind of pedestrian oriented atmosphere of, of, of downtown so um, if the planning commission wants to they find that that plan is met. Number two addresses consistency with the master plan with which we have talked about previously. Um, you know subject to that you know a little bit of a discussion about ground floor residential which not there aren't too many other options here. Um, we believe that it is generally consistent with the existing city of local, city of local master plan. Number three, the plan use shall be served adequately by essential public facilities and services such as highways, streets, police, and fire, etc. Um, you know, four residences isn't a you know huge impact in terms of you know provision of water and sewer and, and power. Although certainly each of those departments in the city would be signing off on the plan. Um, not sure what the applicant's plan is for trash service. There's obviously not room on the site for any dumpsters, so I guess we'd have a question in terms of how that's going to get handled. If it just be typical residential carts or, or how that's going to work. Sometimes with multifamily projects, you see, you know, a dumpster or something like that that gets serviced by a hauler. So that would be one question that we would have. Okay. Todd, do you have an answer to that one? Or a proposal? Please. I have an answer. Um, residential carts. There is both with Red Creek, and it's easy. Thank you. Uh, number four, the land use shall not create excessive additional requirements of public cost for public facilities or services. Um, again, for residential units, does not have a major impact on on city services, at least not one that we would consider to be excessive. Number five, the land use shall not involve uses, activities, processes, etc., that would be detrimental to persons, property, or be welfare by excessive production of traffic, noise, smoke, etc. Um, again, residential land uses do not generally have that kind of impact on, on the community, particularly when we're talking about just four additional units. And then number six, it shall comply with applicable federal, state, and local requirements. <coughs> That would be a condition of approval, as Mr. Shaw mentioned, is obviously, obviously some additional um, 
work to be done on the site. There may be some additional permits from Eagle that we need to be obtained. We've recommended and we've already been working on a development agreement with the city. So those are all things that we want to see buttoned up and obviously that would be a, a condition of approval so that if those things fall through for some reason then they would be you know, it would you know make your site plan approval voided out. So um, those are the six standards and Mr. Chairman back to you. Thank you Andy. Um, special land use criteria one through six. Commissioners I'll give you first whack again. Any questions at this point? Okay. Uh, then I will reopen the uh, public hearing at this point. Anybody in the public want to make a comment on the special okay. land use criteria? Perry Beecham, 924 Riverside. It's a question for Todd. Um, will those carts be required to be uh, maintain inside the garage because and I asked that because we currently have a business on Main Street that has their carts on the sidewalks out in front and again with your building being so close um, I just would hope that sure I'll try to speak loud enough without having to step up to the mic uh, yes thanks uh, so uh, the garage is good size and carts will be inside except for trash day okay. any other Questions or thoughts? Okay, I'll close the uh, public. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. Okay. This is a speed trap. Right. <laughs> Carl Marin at 960 Barnell. Uh, I'm kind of new at all this, so uh, I have a soft spot for the fire department, and I'm hearing a lot of things about space, uh, parking, trash dumpsters, whatnot. Um, I'm in favor of all this development. Um, I think it's a great thing. I, in my opinion, I think there might be a take a little bit of time uh, to make sure there's room for fire. Uh, EMS, um, they're driving much bigger rigs now. They're not driving Suburbans and pickups anymore. They are, but for medical, they're driving the big rigs. Um, and to get water in some of these taller uh, buildings uh, takes a lot of time. Um, if there's no room, if people are starting to park all over the place or whatever, it's really not my concern. My wife's on the fire department, so I hear uh, we don't have room. We can't get a truck in. We can't save this person because of whatnot. So just something to think about. Well, one of the standards here is that it has to be okay by all of the departments in the city, and obviously fire and police would be one of them. Okay. So they, they do take a look at that. They do. But, you know, the concern there, obviously, if you have a third third story in there, you know, how many ladders will actually reach, and, you know, what's that capacity, and how long does it take to buy one, and, you know, all of those kinds of issues. Right. But as long as the city and their departments okay it, then they have the right to do it. Okay. I just ran into, I went to a, the Virginia Township meeting, and uh, they're developing another housing development. And I brought that up, and they they did not get water to the end of it. So um, it is, it is, yeah. But thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Then I will close the uh, public hearing for the uh, special land use criteria. Uh, commissioners, any any final thoughts? <laughs>